everything around me. Green, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, yo. We did a re-swizzle of some of the talent trees. Uh, we've been releasing those, you know, uh, periodically throughout the past couple of weeks. Um, and so I think we got a screenshot somewhere, one of our talent trees, um, which is, you know, they kind of condense down together and we we're trying to make, you know, each thing have a, a choice, right? You're looking for hard choices. Like I might want this and I might want that, but I can't get everything. So I have to make some hard choices, you know, and sometimes I have to work my way to something I really want. And, uh, and otherwise I, you know, I'm, I can't get everything I want basically. And then at the end of these things, uh, once you pick your promotion class, then you work your way down that, and then you get a choice uh, of what I'm calling domains. So in this example, we've got, you know, here's the war domain, but you have three options and you can choose one domain. Now what a domain does is it gives you access to a certain group of disciplines. So before we had you know, um, and, and Blair knows the numbers probably better than I do. So I think we had around 30 major disciplines. Um, yep. And pretty much everyone had access to the majority of them. Well, what we've done now is we've created a lot of different disciplines. I think there's over 110 majors and some large number of minors. Again, Blair's more intimately familiar with the numbers. There's but 111 majors now. 100 111 majors. Okay. So there's a lot. Okay. And what we've done is we sort of took those and spread them around. We've got uh, race groups so that if you're part of a particular race, you have access to some. We've got class groups. And so if you're part of a class, you have access to some others. And then we have these domains. And what this does is that lets the player make a choice. Like, do I want to pick, say, this war domain? And then that will open up more options uh, for me to pick from. And the domains have a lot in them. You know, like the race and class has some cool stuff. It's just not a huge number of them. Domains have a nice big number. And if I don't like the war domain, I can choose a different domain. And each promotion class gets a choice of three. And you can only pick one. So if I take, you know, um, if I'm assassin and I work my way down the line and maybe I take cutthroat, and then, you know, maybe I'll pick, you know, the plague domain or something. And then within that domain, there's a whole bunch of discipline to choose from. And then just like before, you've got your slots and you equip those. Uh, and that's sort of, you know, how you build your character. And I always look, I've now been looking at these domains as almost a, you know, you've got your promotion class. It's almost a prestige class, right? It's that one more step. But you know, if I and somebody else chooses plague on our cutthroats, there's different disciplines in there. And we could totally take different ones. I could have taken some class ones. I could have chosen different talents if I wanted to. I could have taken some race stuff from a different race. You know, it's how you choose to put those things together is what's going to make your cutthroat versus mine. So, well, yeah, um, one thing I think that probably should be pointed out is that the, the domains are not exclusive, right? So a given... Um, if you're looking for a particular major, it's not like I have to go take war. That's the only way to get it. I mean, I'm sure there are some exclusives, but a lot of the disciplines are spread and come out of multiple. They, they basically surface in multiple places. And that was done on purpose. Right. So it could be, hey, I really want to take this major. I could take it by trying to get to war. I could take it by trying to get to death. Oh, you know, or I could just make a stoneborn because they have it as basically there's effectively a racial domain right, for each of the races that is a collection of disciplines that they get direct access to without having to get the access through one of the domains. That's correct. So same That's with the classes, right? So you've got yeah, racial, yeah, a racial yeah, domain, the... a class domain, and then all of the other optional kind of uh, domains. And then it's a many-to-many -many relationship <laughs> between what majors and minors go into which domains. Exactly. There could be, like, you know, you see a really cool a discipline that you want, and it could be in a wide Wide variety of things or as you said it could be exclusive you know and there's you know certain reasons we had to do that for one reason or another but for the most part there are multiple ways to get to an individual discipline all right so um 
And the, the, the total number of not, so not including race and class domains, the total number of domains currently is 15, right? Correct. There are 15 uh, domains. And the other ones I've been calling like your race group or your class group. Um, and I've been, you know, this is what I've been doing in my mind, at least, that the domains are these things at the end that you buy access to. And Mira Luna just asked, are miners in the domains as well? And the answer is yes. The miners are also in the domains, and they're also in the racial and the class-based domains, too. That is correct. So, yeah, they are still included in these things. They're complete groups of disciplines, both majors and minors. So the, the, the beginning of the catalog, um, by the way, is, uh, is is going to the game and it's poured through this. There are so many interconnections that effectively uh, what I wanted, the, the design that I asked for was I wanted to be able to design characters both top uh, or bottoms down and top up. So top up means I have an idea for a class that I want to build. So I just start at the bottom with my racing class and then I'm just kind of building as I go. Top down is I'm out in the game and I come across this cool major discipline that I think will synchronize really well with this other power or this other discipline. So I need, need to back down and say, okay, what kind of character concept will eventually lead me to this destination? So I wanted to be able to, because once you have that kind of a system, you can basically wander back and forth, up and down forever, because you'll start on a concept and get somewhere and you'll see something that'll make you go, oh, wait, but that gives me a different idea. And then you wander back down to see how you can incorporate that idea. And you do that a couple times and suddenly you're on a totally different concept than the one you started with. Um, so, so that, that's what we were going for there is we want a big tree to explore. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And then one of the things that got added here also with these disciplines is a sense of progression, right? So, um, and I, I know Blair, uh, handled all of this, so I'll, I'll let him talk about yeah. uh, the progression. Hey, Blair, one question from the chat real quick. How many miners are in right now? Uh, 89, 89 and 111 are the two numbers. Uh, and so just for numbers sake, we've also, we got rid of a lot of the old miners that we didn't like anymore. Like I think uniform leather is a good place it with something else. So in many cases, it's not all of the old stuff. Cause we didn't like some of the old stuff and you guys didn't like it. So we just kind of threw that on the heap and replaced it with something else that was more fun. And, uh, but yeah, we Let's also we resurrected some of the old things that we'd previously played with and cut. We brought them back, uh, um, yeah. kind of like a greatest hits, and turned them into new majors. So yeah, absolutely. There are definitely some ones that I'm a little worried about uh, that we resurrected. We'll see how it plays, and uh, we'll see. We Josh went through and made a whole ton of tweaks to a lot of these powers. So when Ray starts going through these, you may associate a power with a specific thing. That power may do something very different now. Right. Uh, we reused a lot of the, uh, the the words that we'd used previously to describe things, but the powers actually may do something completely different now. So just be aware of that. Uh, but let's talk about progression for a second. So this was uh, an experiment that was in on the old or the current set of crafting majors, which is as you make a better discipline it actually gets more statistical value out of it. So everybody seemed to like that. So we incorporated that into all of the majors and minors such that you'll notice the ones you buy from the vendors, they have no statistical attributes on them. They just give you the power. And then as you get a better quality discipline, you will notice that more stats get added and higher values. This has led us, I mean, Todd and I are even talking now Back in the past, we had a kind of an archaic, heavy-handed way to force you to go get better disciplines, which is, hey, you just can't put a lower quality discipline into a higher quality vessel. We're talking about pulling that out right now because it's actually on you now where it's kind of a bad choice to go not get a better discipline, right? So just the, uh, the higher quality disciplines having more stats should mean, hey, I want to go get the better ones because I'm just going to get more stats out of it. And of course, we can tweak how much we're giving out just to make sure, like if it's not juicy enough and there really isn't that much difference between certain uh, quality levels, we'll tweak that. But this is kind of the path that we're going down now. We haven't pulled that vessel quality thing yet. We're still talking about it, but I have a feeling we will.
I guess let's go ahead and jump in to uh, the inside a domain. So the first domain that we're going to look at is war. Uh, you'll see that that's around in a bunch of different places. But let's look at the first group of the majors inside the war domain. So, and I'm not going to talk about everything. There's just a lot here. So I'm just going to give some highlights as we go. And I'm sure you guys will, will sort of tear these apart in screenshots or whatever later. But I did just want to talk about it. Let me get my name up. Let's talk about uh, Blade Dancer. So one thing I want to point out here with Blade Dancer, and I assume you guys can read the text. I know it's it's small for me, but I'm sure you guys can read it. Uh, we've got, you know, a group slashing penetration buff, and there's the, the blood, pr uh, blood price is the healing orb and attack power buff. But the thing I want to point out is if you notice, these seem themed around particular weapon builds, right? So... What we want to do is to allow players to focus more on weapon type builds. I want to make a slashing build. I want to make a piercing build. I want to do a crushing build, whatever. And so you'll start to see the permeate through a variety of disciplines, okay? And that's, again, one of those things I just wanted to point out. And again, you guys can pull through some of the details. And you notice you can also see, you know, oh, if this is, you know, so like Blade Master, for example, is available in War or Death. So as Todd was talking about, there's two ways to get here. And you're going to see that sort of stuff all over the place. Go to the next one. So the next one here uh, that I want to talk about is Dirty Fighter. So again, the thing here is, you know, Black Mantle's a common thing. We've seen that. But again, with Festering Wounds, you know, it'll reduce the healing bonus of the target you put it on. It also exposes the healer if they heal. And then we've added on here crazy pills, which is it'll increase your damage uh, on low resource. And that's a passive, right? So here we've got an active and a passive on here. And it's, of course, great to use against healers. Now you guys saw the new healing class. And so healing's now more prevalent. So we've got to give you ways to deal with that. And that's what Dirty Fighter does here. Okay, let's hit the next one. This one, okay, now this one's this one's fun to me. Let's look at Knife Grinder, okay? So before we had talked, uh, we had shown the Assassin class, right? And I know there was a lot of like, oh, Blackguard, what can they do? Um, I just want to point out a couple of things here. So if we look at uh, Knife Grinder, it's got Long Live the Fighter which is a passive, and it adds um, a bleeding uh, debuff to an enemy on every third basic attack. Okay, that's great. And shrapnel, which is a passive, that when you, at on a chance to attack, will, or when you attack, there's a chance to spread the bleeds around to nearby enemies. Okay? So let's think about that. The Blackguard on Assassin has access to the war domain. So he can now start bleeding people and he's got impaled some other or he's got some other things to, to cause bleeds he can spread these bleeds around then he uses dagger storm which then automatically poisons bleeding targets now he can bleed and poison in a huge radius i mean they, you start to have these synergies and these combinations and this is just on the surface there's a lot more synergies and combinations that are out there but i just wanted to give you an idea uh, of because he chose this domain, he could get some of these things and really start to build some interesting builds and some interesting concepts. Um, so yeah, that shrapnel, I'm excited to see what you guys do with that. Okay, so those are the majors. Let's go to the next one. These are the minors. Now, if you notice, minors now have stats. All right. So there you go. There's that there. And Let's look at Mark for Death. So this one you, first it's just, I think it's a really cool power, but first it's also a power, right? It's activatable powers now appear on miners. So Mark for Death, uh, marking a target, or you mark a target to take increased damage from your group. So again, you stay coordinated as a group, you can really do some serious damage. So 
again, these are miners. Miners should be pretty good now. You know, you should want these miners. You're going to need to make choices like, man, what miners am I going to take? What build do I want to make? How am I going to take a miner and pair it with my major? And whether that's for my class or my domain or whatever, and how's that going to work with the talents I chose to create some interesting build? That's the goal here, okay? All right, let's look at the next one. So the next one, um, I mean, Spirit Whip you've seen before, but again, as the concept of whether it's spreading bleeds, spreading poisons, you know, doing things like that, you can start to see more and more synergies and combinations here, right? So, oh, if I hit multiple targets with this, then I can put more bleeds on people. <laughs> then I can hit shrapnel to where it spreads to more people. Then I do my deck. I mean, like I said, you start how things work. And that was the goal with this here. And this is just one domain, right? This is the war domain. All right, so let's look at the next domain, which is gonna be dark. So we'll look at the majors. We'll start looking at those. Okay. So let's, you saw, I mean, uh, Blair showed the progression for Nyad, but let's talk about Windlord. All right. So one thing that we wanted to do was there were a lot of cool powers in classes, and we wanted to sort of open those up a bit, let some other builds exist in different classes that had access to some of these powers. And Pursuit is one of those. So, you know, we've heard people who play melee, they're having troubles closing sometimes on some of the ranged. Problem solved, all right? And there's a lot of ways to do it. This isn't the only way, but this is just an example of a good closing power that we thought um, would be fun to be available to more people. Now, it's in the dark domain, so you have to have access to dark domain to get to it. But there you go. Let's see. All right, let's look at the next one. Now, let's see, in here, Corrupted Soul. So let's see here. We've got our Shrivel, which, of course, it's Black Mantle, uh, Expose, it's Shrivel. And we have Soul Steal. So this is an attack that deals damage to enemies in a field and returns health to you. So, again, this is, you know, there's a little bit of heal here. There's damage here. It's two activatable power. So... Majors can have one active, one passive, two, two actives, two passive. A hard rule. It's what makes this thing sort of work together, right? And this is an example of one that's got two active powers. I know there were some people who were like, I love to fill up my power bar. I want all the powers. Well, if that's what you want, there are ways for you to fill out that power bar. There are others who are like, I got enough powers. I don't want any more powers. I want fewer that do what I want them to do. And now you've got options. You take things that have fewer powers, if that's what you want. You take things with more powers, if that's what you want. Good for you. All right, let's look at the next one. Those are the majors for dark. Now let's move into some mod Okay, so one thing I wanna point out here is barbed steak. So now steaks are now available as miners or they're on disciplines. Right? They can appear in a variety of places. So that is, again, something that was available in certain classes. We wanted to expose that to others because we thought it was, it was fun. The other thing I want to point out is concussive trap. So now traps being, are now available to other classes. Now, the rangers or the warden is going to be the best at it. That's what they're geared towards. But... We thought it'd be interesting if that's the build that someone wanted to do in another class. Like, what if I spent my talent or not talent, I spent my uh, discipline slots focusing on this instead of focusing on other things? That could be an interesting build. I'm kind of curious what people are going to come up with. And granting access to things like that will create some of those interesting builds. Okay. So, and again, I want to point out concussive trap. That's an active. You drop your trap. Congratulations. So, all right, let's look at the next one. So now you'll see explosive trap, right? Or fairy trap. Now, if you'll notice, these are passives, okay? These aren't separate traps. If, if I've got concussive trap, that's 
if I get explosive trap, that just makes that same trap stun and add burning. It, they become additive, right? If I get, um, and there's another one coming up too, and then they just start stacking. If I can, if that's the build I want to do, I equip all these things and all of a sudden like, man, this trap is really good, but I just spent how many of my minor slots to make that happen, right? But again, it's all about the builds you want to make. What do you want to do? How can you get creative with this stuff? That's the goal. All right, uh, let's look at the next one. So there's toxic trap and there's serrated trap. So there's a lot of trap types. And then recon again is an example of something that was available uh, inside a class that we wanted to, to bring to, to other players. So if you're trying one thing, get into dark, and this is what you want to do, you now have access to it. Again, that was a big thing. Okay, um, let's look at the last domain for today. It's going to be light, okay? So these, uh, let's see, these are the majors here. Let's look at Exorcist. So in Exorcist, uh, if you notice in the stat area, it says bonus damage holy. So before that had sort of been this other area that was, hey, this unmitigated damage, we didn't want to mess with it. But then, you know, we got to talk in and people didn't use it very much because you couldn't boost it or you couldn't build a character around it. Well, I remember I was talking about building characters for damage types. Here you go. And this is that. And another thing I want to point out with Exorcist is you notice uh, Soul Steel, that was on Corrupted Soul. So just because a power exists on one discipline doesn't mean that power can't exist on a different discipline paired with something else. So even if you're down looking for a combination, like I can't get that complete discipline with that power, that power exists over here, so now I'll take Exorcist because I have access to light when maybe I didn't have access to dark. All right, so you can still start to build some interesting combinations. And, and then Blessed Symbol. Um, that was Cleric only. And again, that power is now available uh, to others in the light domain. Okay, let's uh, hit the next one. This is Nyad. You guys have taken a look at this. But I want to point out something uh, specifically on Nyad, and that's the cleanse. So I know a lot of people have been talking about R emitters. Well, if you notice that that cleanses them. And so the cleanse will remove from the entire group bleeds, diseases, poisons, and R emitters. So we now have a variety of these types of things to sort of help with these sort of stacking uh, damages and debuffs. All right, let's... Uh, there we go. Let's see. In this one, Transcendent Warrior. Let's talk about this one. So again, this has to do with auras. Auras were a cleric only thing. Um, and what we want to do is bring that concept, you know, to more to more classes. So what we did is we created some new auras uh, to allow that sort of gameplay to occur uh, to occur uh, occur occur. So with uh, like Guiding Light Aura. That's a group damage bonus for Fire and Holy. Again, stacking damage types so you guys can create some builds. And Divine Aura, which is the, um, you increase your support power and your personal healing modifier for the group. So if you've got your healer there, maybe another healer, maybe you're not the healer, but you're more in support. You can take this to support your healer out so that they can take other things. Uh, it all depends on how you want to team and build your group. But I thought Auras were fun and cool and we should sort of be using them more. So that's what that is. Okay, let's check out some of the miners here. And we've got this one for meditation, which is um, out of combat. Um, you can restore your own resource and stamina quickly, so less downtime. So maybe you stealth out, get out of the way, whoop, you can get your stuff back, or if you were harvesting, uh, and you're like, you know what? I'm out of combat. I'm fine. Boop, boop, boop. Get your stamina back. There's a few other things that you can use for that, but just one of those, you know, hey, you're out of combat. Let's just get you back into the fight. All right. And then, of course, I'm sure you guys are going to look at some of those other ones in there. All right, let's look at the next one. This is the last one we've got. It's the last group 
this is the last group? Yeah, it's the last group of miners for light. And one thing I wanted to point out here, resurrection. Yeah, resurrection is now on a minor disk. So if other people want to res, they can, but it takes up a slot. You have to give up something else to take that. But again, it's one of those things where, you know, what kind of build do you want to make? And there are a lot of tools available now, all right? So we've only looked at three domains. And you saw the quantity of things that are here. And I only talked briefly about a handful of them uh, and a few of the combinations, uh, a few of the things we did to give access to other players. We've got weapon type builds, damage type builds. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of new meta. There's a lot of things that I'm hoping uh, you guys can put together and come up with some really cool and fun builds that we never thought of, right? I know what Todd likes to say is, hey, yeah, sure, there's a ton of builds and some of them are going to be terrible and some of them are going to be great. And that's absolutely true. Uh, yeah, that that's actually part of the exploration and the skill of the game. I mean, is is I we have no it's not it's not as simple as rock, paper, scissors, right? It's it's not. Right. It's much more complicated than that. So yeah, and there are a lot of combinations. So like I said, you can pick certain talents that seem, you know, I know people have been looking at the talent trees and you know, you look at them and that's the only box you've been looking at. And so you're like, well, this pairs with what you take. But once you start folding in these new disciplines. Uh, you start to be like, you know what, maybe I do want this other talent. Because if I take this domain, which gives me access to these disciplines, they pair really well with these talents over here that I wasn't considering before, but I'm considering now because that might be a really cool build. Um, and what you guys come up with is the stuff that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see. I'm really excited. Yeah, the, the optimization to me is is part of the fun, right? That's that's part of the way the design having the hard choices. I think that there was uh, there's there was a basic question that was asked when we first announced this. It was like, well, why don't you just let everybody have access to everything? Because that's the most number of combinations. And strictly speaking, yes, that's true. If you just allow no pre, if there's no prereqs at all and everybody can take every single thing, then that is the most number of combinations. But it's not as interesting of a tree to explore, right? It the, the min maxing opportunities are actually better and more nuanced if you have to be clever about, well, I really want to get this and I really want to get this. And that's going to be a challenge to get because I don't have that many points to spend or I don't have that many slots. So it, it makes it that much more, um, it, it feels that much better when you find one of those, right? When you find one of those combinations that really sings, that really comes together, that's that's the, uh, the moment that we're trying to get to. And, and if you just have every, everybody has access to everything, you don't get that. So um, I, I do think that we will hit a balance spot with this where the number of combinations that come out of it is going to be staggering. And the uh, number of good and bad builds, like that's going to be staggering. Um, I think it'll feel really fun to explore up and down the tree. If it turns out that we go through this process and we're like, hey, there's just not enough. We need more combinations. We certainly can always open up the domains. Like we have the ability to go in and add new domains that are just grouping other different ways to group existing things. We can open up and add new things to domains if we want to, that'll create new build combinations. Like it is a very, very extensible system for us to go in and add things to over time. So I, I think it's just a much better foundation. I saw a comment earlier that somebody was like, this changes the game. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yes, yes, it does. It, it very much does. It changes is the game um, yeah there's a lot there it is as you know Blair said last time it was a re-swizzle of what was there so um, you know some of the same things that you've seen before they exist a lot of the same powers and things that you had before they're scattered around they're they're in there uh, not everything is but um, most things are scattered around inside there and then again as he said today just because you you know recognize the name of something it might act very differently and then even if you see the name of something and then it you read the description and it does what it did before, that doesn't mean the values are the same. 
So because we changed a lot of other things, we did a balance pass on a lot of these too, you know, based on player feedback. This wasn't being used. Okay, well let's let's juice it up. You know, let's make it let's make it cool. Right. Um, so yeah, I think that that was one of my favorite things in the play test yesterday. I was using a confessor, and I had grab Thar's hammer on him. And prior to this, I needed a hammer to actually use that power. But now it's just I can use it as a confessor. So I was just using Gravathar's hammer, and yeah. that is cool, right? It's just um, so a lot of the powers that you're familiar with. Again, there might be changes. This is garbage, but no, in fact, we made it good, and we made it usable by more people to make it good. So don't get kind of kind of open your mind. Do the whole yeah, quad Open your mind. Yeah, that's actually a really really good piece of advice. Is just step back, open your mind and examine these things from a new perspective. I mean, it's fine to, I mean, you've, you've got your knowledge before, and that'll give you a leg up on sort of how to put some of these things together, but come at it with fresh eyes and see what you can put together, see what works and what doesn't work. And, um, you know, and I know we're not, I've read a bunch of the forums and we're not gonna bat a thousand, right? So not everything's gonna be perfect, but what we want you to do is to play with this stuff with those fresh eyes and that open mind See what you can come up with and, you know, find areas like, oh, man, this would have been cool if this had worked with this, but this didn't quite did this, you know, and you're going to find a bunch of that stuff. And we would definitely love that kind of feedback um, because we want this to be, you know, those hard choices. God, I want this and I want this. Which one do I take? They're both cool. Or here's a bunch of them. I want. They're all cool. What do I take? And so you're going to start coming up with build concepts. Uh, and then you're going to try some things out. And as Todd said, some will work, some won't. And that's okay. Not everything's going to work. Don't expect everything to work. But, you know, playing around with this stuff and really exploring and experimenting it with that open mind and those fresh eyes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like I said before, I'm really excited to see what y'all come up with. Okay, so a couple couple of the questions that came out. Uh, one is about wipes and what's going to happen with wiping. So when it goes to test, the easy answer right now is we're just going to wipe test because that makes it easy. You guys have uh, infinite resource vendors there, so you, you can take, I mean, it, it will take you no time to get things back. On live, the answer, honestly, is I just don't know. Our first goal was to get this stuff in, and then we're going to take a look and see what has to be wiped and what doesn't. Worst case scenario, it will require items and characters, but not passive training, I think. Um, so I don't have a firm answer for you on that. I'm trying to get the, the goal. Our goal was to get this out to you guys as quickly as possible so you can start looking at it. So the easiest thing to do for that is to get it on test, knowing that there's going to be bugs. I mean, we found things like, oh, this power had a decimal point that was misset, and it's just it clearly was never supposed to do that much damage. Like stuff like that just happens. And, you know, there's with 1500 powers and all the combinations, there's going to be a lot more testing than our QA group, um, even though they work 24 7 literally, because we have guys that work overseas <laughs> testing builds overnight. Um, they can't possibly find all the issues that you guys can. So we're going to try and get it up there as quick as we can. It is not quite ready, but it is a lot closer than I think you guys expect that it is, which is pretty cool. Um, so hopefully we'll be coming back to you very, very soon with uh, with the first thumbs up and telling you that you can get in and start kicking the tires for us and giving us your feedback. Um, uh, another question that came up was one on banking. Um, I will go and take a look at it. So we, the banking thing is not, it's actually a technical consideration. Like it has to do with storage space in the, in the persistent database and how much data we stream down to you when you log in um, and when you open your bank. And so there are technical um, considerations there. I can't just walk in and say like, Increase the size, triple it. You know, I, I mean, I could, but the implication of that might be that somebody logs in with too big of a bank and the whole system goes down. So, um, so I will go and take a look at it. I recognize that that is a pain point for you guys. I'll see what I can do uh, because it wasn't our main focus. Our main focus was get this in, right? So once we get it in, there will be fallout. For example, I just ran through the new player experience with this stuff this morning, and there's a handful of like, tips that trigger or tutorial uh, dialogue sequences now that are just wrong. Like they just tell you the wrong thing because the system has changed underneath the cover. So there will be some fallout from this. 
Um, another question that we had was about how do you get these? Current plan is to keep them on thralls. Um, we haven't quite figured out how to do that. I like the idea that we that, that thralls, you know, like you kill this guy, you know you're going to get this discipline. That seems like a hell of a lot of thralls, so it might make more sense to move them to one thrall, a specific thrall is a particular domain. So that unfortunately would add some RNG back in, but maybe we can drop more than one at one time. Uh, moving the miners to the thrall lieutenants, that is still in consideration. So it's something that we're still looking at and thinking about. Um, I've got so, some questions here, Todd. Yep. Yeah, I'm just, I was trying to get through, I saw there were some harder questions that came and I wanted to tackle those first gotcha. uh, yeah, I, while we I, were in I, the I, middle of chat. Yeah, I, 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 I jotted some down. So Ganelon asked, will it still be primarily combining three discs of the same quality to get the next rarity? The answer to that is yes. Is yeah, the highest drop going away. still uh, blew off of mobs? We actually, none of us liked that there was a gap in between white and blue we just kind of jumped over a quality level there so all of the thralls will drop green quality so your upgrade path to make a legendary uh a discipline is 27 of those green drops and i think it works out to something like 108,000 gold so it, it's it's adding a nice, nice gold sink back into the economy and you will want the higher quality ones as you see because they are far better than the vendor purchased ones but we're allowing people to mix and match more, right? We're taking the the restrict we believe that we're going to take away the restriction that that tied vessel quality to uh to discipline quality. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I talked about that one earlier. This is just this is the the mechanic of using the combines. Uh, I had a question about uh people know that the Unity devs are in our offices right now virtually. They're not tech they would be here technically if it wasn't for uh pandemic, but um but they're working full time and one somebody somebody just basically asked, how's that going? Seems to be going pretty well. We found a fair number of things that we're gonna go and tackle. I think we've got a list of about, I wanna say a couple dozen um items that are combination of art or tech or just the pipeline, the way things are set up and imported that we think could have a pretty significant uh impact. So that's pretty cool. So, so yeah, I'd, I'd say that initiative seems to be going pretty well. <laughs> yes. In fact, I was working with one of them yesterday. Good stuff. Yeah, hey, Blair, speaking of those original videos, that just reminded me that one of the first ones that we did was basically making fun of our creative process effectively, right? Like I had a monster. Uh, oh, the yeah, the owlbear. With the hippogriff. The, yeah, it's like an owlbear that turned into a hippogriff that turned into a griffin. I saw the griffin in game last week for the first time. But actually finally made its way through the pipe, got sound uh, hooked up to it, and I saw it in. Uh, it was actually pretty cool. So we'll have to show that off um, uh, sometime soon. I just, it's funny that you mentioned that because that was literally years ago. I think it's just one of those art assets that kind of got pushed off here because we had a problem with the hitboxes. Yep. Remember the, the hitbox, um, we couldn't actually, the hitbox was like a pill that was either inside of it or it was so big you would collide way out here. We finally got the hitbox text in, or uh, tech in, and because that was in, now we could actually bring that monster in after all this time. Yeah, that's so. one of the things we haven't mentioned about 6200 is we definitely have uh, some new hitbox tech, which is fantastic, which means we're not reliant on the character pill anymore for weird shaped... Uh, creatures so we can make them bigger and uh it's uh it's much cooler so i'm glad we finally got that feature in there uh but yeah the miniatures turned out really really great like i i was setting them up next to, to some other minis that i have sitting around in fact i have you know like that's one of the pathfinder ones that you know just comes in the normal pack and here's a cool dwarf on a bear. And I was basically just kind of setting them all up and looking at them um, and zooming in and taking pictures real tight to see how much detail they had. And the answer is a lot. Like, yeah. they have a lot of really nice detail. So for the people out there who paint, which I'm sure there's a few of you, they're going to paint really nicely. 
they actually do have a sun drop effect on them, which you can't see um, here on this on this screenshot. This, this or this render was taken before we decided to do that. That was Ray's suggestion. But if you're curious what that looks like, tech, uh, just do a Google search for sun drop miniatures. Um, it basically does a nice kind of pass over them with a, a kind of a bronzing effect or a, 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 almost a stone. Like a dry effect brush kind of almost, yeah. Yeah, it looks it looks really pretty cool. So for those of you who don't paint uh, but think the miniatures would be cool to use just out of the box they do, do look pretty cool yeah because um, i'm definitely not a painter by any stretch of the word and so having them with that they already just look awesome you know like oh that thing looks so good and they because that the sun drop really just it fills in all those cracks it looks really good yeah goonie i think 69 just said you guys should do a miniature painting contest and i absolutely was wanting us to do that uh, uh, at launch i think that would be really really cool yeah for sure so yeah and if you don't paint you can be like me and put them on the top of your monitor and look at them while you work <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so there yeah, you go they, they turned out pretty cool pretty cool so uh, and the art book turned out great like the other pieces in there as well like the art book is uh, it's 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 really nicely printed. It's got a incredible foreword written by me. No, that's the worst part of it. But the uh, the the cover's nice. The printing is nice. And flipping through it, it is a great reminder of how much amazing art there is in this game. Like it it really did a fantastic job of of highlighting that work. So that's really cool. The comic book is in there, which is really cool. So anyway, the collector's edition is a is a pretty cool thing. So um, if that's something that if you're a collecting type and that's something interesting to you, I definitely would check it out. So someone asked the question: Is this taking the place of the November Q and A? And no, it's not. Oh. This is not. This is not an official Ace Q and A, even though we are Q and Aing. Uh, I didn't show the card, so it, it lacks that piece of authenticity. But uh, yeah. You will still get the November one and well, more than so likely. I, I'll give you a little bit of a of a hint on that too. So um here's the thing. This build was cooking so fast and seemed like it was gonna be hitting test that we were not gonna have a chance, we thought, to talk about the disciplines if we waited till the next QA. So um so for that reason, we're like, oh, I I guess we need to just have one. So we asked Debbie Sue, can you throw together an off cycle Q and A for us just specifically to talk about this so that when they get into tests, they'll have some idea what this thing is and, and then put it through the paces. So. Yeah. So you're still going to get the November. Uh, this is a bonus. Yay. Bonus. Everybody likes, likes bonus. And uh, there was another question. Where was that? It got lost in the sea of miniature painting. <laughs> Okay, well, if it's important, it'll come up again. Um, I uh, We do have our, were we going to show the slide on the Crow Appreciation Rewards just for everyone who shows up, the October, November ones? Oh, hey, look at that. Great job, Emily. Uh, it looks like uh, we were giving away the Flaming Sword and the, what was that? The, the Weapon Skin and the Sigil. I haven't seen that sigil yet in game. I, I tend to see most of these because they come through me uh, to actually get built and put in the game. But I haven't seen that one yet. And then the dragon sigil and belt totem. I really like the belt totems as well as the, the badge slot items. They're just a cool way to customize your character. And for those of you who have been here from the beginning, thank you. And you guys will have all kinds of stuff later. Don't. Uh, enjoy those things. They're, they're always cool to have. And they're good moments where you can just flex on everybody. And be like, check it. I was here since the beginning. 